Hi everyone, welcome to this week's input. Um, just before we get going, I've got one notice for you, which is just to wave at you once again. Um, this book, oh, let's hold it so you can see it. There you go. Um, this is the book which some of you bought um, for last year's Lent course, which of course didn't happen. Well, it's only 10 days away from this year's Lent. Um, so I'm thinking Wednesday nights, half past seven, um, we'll see if you are interested in coming along to a zoom meeting um, where we'll have a look at this book um, if you are uh, then we will crack on there's probably some copies of it available on amazon um, it is a nice book and um, yes it would be nice to spend some time together looking at it so if you want to come to those zoom meetings half past seven on wednesday evenings you will have to email me because obviously I have to set up the meeting and send you an invitation so if you want to come along to that send me an email okay um hey that's all that I wanted to say um, all my other notices um, and that one are available uh, on the news each Friday um, so do have a look at that if you haven't so far but I think what we'll do for now is we will bow our heads for a prayer. Um, so let's um, just still ourselves as we focus on the God that we've come to worship today. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your presence here with us by your Holy Spirit. And we do pray that you help us now to worship you in spirit and in truth, to the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now we're going to start off with our Bible reading as normal. And uh, our Bible reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, uh, chapter 40, beginning at verse 21. And the prophet writes, Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither and the whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? For who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not 
be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, people, let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we do thank you for the words of Holy Scripture. And we do pray that today, by your Holy Spirit, you would take my words and speak through them into our hearts to the glory of Jesus name Amen Okay well I'm going to begin this part as I often do with some thoughts about the news of the past seven days and here in the UK there has only really been one story this week namely the death of Captain Sir Tom Moore and Captain Tom's story really is quite remarkable he was born in Yorkshire of course his father was from a family of builders his mother was a head teacher he went to the local grammar school and then he started an apprenticeship in civil engineering but with the outbreak of the Second World War, he was conscripted to the Duke of Wellington's regiment and was selected for officer training. When he had completed this, he was posted to India and following his promotion to captain, he was posted on to Burma in 1944. He returned to England the following year uh, was demobilised in 1946 and then he organised the annual reunion of the Duke of Wellington Regiment for the next 64 years. In Civvy Street he worked in the building trade for 40 years and in his spare time he raced motorbikes and appeared on blankety blank on Christmas Day in 1983. Yeah, it's on YouTube, you can watch it after you've watched this. Ironically though, it was only the rise of the coronavirus that brought Captain Tom to the attention of the nation. During the first lockdown of 2020, the 99 year old decided to begin a sponsored walk around his garden in order to raise money for NHS charities together and the British media got wind of this story and began to publicise Captain Tom's efforts and the donations poured in. When five million pounds had been raised Captain Tom explained his motivation in an interview. He said and I quote all of them from top to bottom in the National Health Service they deserve everything that we can possibly put in their place. They are all so brave because every morning or every night they're putting themselves into harm's way and I think you've got to give them full marks for that effort. We're a little bit like having a war at the moment the doctors and nurses, they're all on the front line and all of us behind, we've got to supply them and keep them going with everything that they need. As I'm sure you know, by the time Captain Tom got to his 100th birthday on the last day of April, he had a number one record, he'd raised over £30 million pounds, and in honour of this inspiring achievement, the army finally promoted him to colonel. Uh, he was given flypasts by the army and the air force and in July, after a petition, he was knighted by Her Majesty the Queen. And all of that is marvellous and of course richly deserved. But let's remember that when Captain Tom began his sponsored war, 
he didn't really expect any of that. He wondered if anyone would be interested in what he was doing, but he, he wanted to do his bit. He wanted to support people through the pandemic and he hoped that by his birthday he might possibly have raised a thousand pounds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the idea of God taking our noble aspirations and our good actions and enabling us to achieve through them far more than we could possibly imagine. That is our link to today's Bible reading. Because in the lesson that we heard from the book of the prophet Isaiah, we hear God himself addressing his people. And he said, Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? And of course the honest answer to that question is, well, when we make the effort to do good things, quite often it does feel like no one else is interested and nobody else is bothered. And if we're really honest, a lot of the time, yeah, that is the case. Um, a lot of the time, there is not a lot of interest in the little thing that we are doing. But I would suggest to you that it's a mistake to equate the lack of interest from the rest of our society or even the rest of our community. It's a mistake to equate that with a lack of interest on the part of the Almighty. The God described in the scriptures both sees and appreciates the good things that we do even when no one else does and that's very reassuring isn't it because when we're trying our best but we're reaching the end of our tether most of us do need some encouragement and the affirmation that God sees and cares can provide that and of course when it does we experience that as very positive but here's the thing there's a lovely verse towards the end of St Paul's letter to the Galatians where the Apostle says to the believers let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up and I mention that because although there are plenty of occasions when you or I doing the right thing doesn't seem to impact the world very much, if we keep doing the right thing, there's always the possibility that God may suddenly decide that by his grace he's going to bless our latest good deed in a way that has never happened before. The Lord gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and the young stumble and fall. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Now I quote those verses because Captain Tom was 99 years old when he decided that he wanted to do something to support the doctors and nurses battling the coronavirus on our behalf. And so he did what he could. And I'm going to speculate that actually the main thing that Captain Tom Moore will be remembered for is that. Now on one level obviously where this is going uh, is to say well 
let's try to be like Captain Tom. Whether there's anyone watching or not, whether it seems to make a big impact or not, let's all do the right thing. But let's also not forget that sometimes if we do not become weary of doing good, God might well take the right thing that we do and bless it beyond anything we intended or dared to hope for. That is what God can do and sometimes it's what he decides he will do. But God only has the option to do that if we have not become weary of doing good. So as we consider the scriptures for today and as we remember Captain Tom, let's commit ourselves to doing good and to encouraging one another when we do become weary and through doing so to give God the option of blessing our efforts beyond measure to the glory of Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads now and pray that it might be so. Father, we do thank you for the life and the example of Captain Sir Tom Moore. And we do thank you for the Holy Scriptures and for what we've heard from them today. And we do pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would help us uh, to take encouragement from what we've heard, not to grow weary in doing good, but to remember that you do see, you do appreciate what we do, and sometimes you do choose to bless far beyond anything we could have expected. And so, Lord, we do ask that you'd give us the grace the strength and the perseverance to continue to do good to the glory of the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're going to uh, continue in prayer now um, and in our intercessions we'll use the usual response so when you hear me pray the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, would you please respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your presence here with us by your Holy Spirit. And we do ask that by that Spirit, you would guide our prayers now that they might achieve what you would have them achieve i might glorify the name of our lord and savior jesus christ lord in your mercy hear our prayer lord we do thank you for the privilege of living in such a beautiful part of your world we do remember that the beauty we enjoy is just a pale reflection of your far greater beauty. And yet we're also conscious that there are many places in this, your world, where your beauty is not reflected as clearly as it might be. We do bring before you now some of those places and situations. And Lord, we do pray for everywhere where people are battling the coronavirus. Lord, we pray for um, the politicians, the leaders of the nations who have difficult decisions to make. We pray that you would um, guide them to make the best decisions available to them. And Lord, we do also pray for medical staff everywhere that you protect them and for scientists developing vaccines that you would lead and guide them by your Holy Spirit Lord in your mercy hear our prayer 
Lord God, we do pray for our leaders, political, military and spiritual. Lord, we do pray that you would keep each one safe and that you would draw them to you so that they might be given wisdom and discernment beyond that which they naturally possess. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do pray for our communities. Lord, we do thank you for our surgeries, our hospitals, and for those who deliver health care in our care homes and in our community. Lord God, we do pray that you would bless each one, that you would keep them safe and healthy, and that they would continue to be a blessing to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do remember those who are ill or infirm at this time. We do pray especially for Mick, Emma and Peter, for Marjorie, Julie and Kay, for Martin, Eric and John, Celia, Jane and June, Sue, Brenda and Mary, Raymond, Paul and Colin, Anna, Rita, Tara, Elizabeth, Joyce and Janet, Anne and Malcolm and in the quietness let's bring before God those others known to us who especially need his touch at this time oh God for these who we've named and for those who we've not named but whose names are known to you we do ask for your comfort and your peace your perseverance and your endurance while they wait for your healing. We do pray that you bring them ultimately to a place of health and of wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also remember those who have passed on from this life to the next. Especially today, Lord, we pray for Margaret, for Mike, and for Tom. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, finally, we pray for ourselves thanking you for what we've heard from the scriptures today and asking that by your Holy Spirit you give us the strength, the grace and the perseverance not to become weary in doing good but rather to keep doing the right thing up to our dying day so that we give you the option of taking what we are able to offer and blessing it a hundredfold. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join together now in the words of the Lord's Prayer, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And a final blessing. So, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God the Father and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord.
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.